getting ready to go on a musky fishing trip uh, with a few buddies. We are going to head up to Lake St. Clair, which is on the border of Michigan and Canada, and it's right in between Lake Erie and Lake Huron. Um, it's definitely not uh, as big as the other Great Lakes, and uh, it's a lot shallower actually. It only gets to about, I think, a maximum of like 18 feet deep. Um, and most of it is, uh, I think, averaging like 8 to 10 feet deep. So it's kind of a musky breeding ground, and it's really like kind of the musky capital of the world. So before we go, I'm going to make a musky lure that I'm going to use up there, and hopefully we'll see if I can catch some musky on it. I see him back there. I'm not any kind of a professional at making lures. This is going to be... Uh, my first lure that I'm making but uh, I've done a lot of research on it and I like doing these videos to kind of show beginners that they can get out there um, and and start like a hobby like this if they got any interest in doing it they can follow along and uh, see how easy it is to to get started so before we jump into uh, making this lure um, if you want to support my channel uh, I have t-shirts available so you can go to my website and check those out and these hats should be coming out pretty soon. I just uh, I made these pretty much all by myself, um, handmade, and I think they turned out pretty good. So go check those out, uh, noblesavageoutdoors.com, or if you're a cheapskate like me, you can always just subscribe to my channel. That's absolutely 100% free. So let's get to making this lure. So if you hear any weird noises, might be Matt over here sharpening hooks or doing some weird stuff. What's up, guys? <laughs> All right, so the first thing with uh, making a lure is picking your wood. This is poplar. Um, the reason a lot of people use poplar is because it has a good uh, strength to buoyancy or density ratio. So the more buoyant a piece of wood is, um, the easier you can you can make it track the way you want it to by adding weight and it's more stable but uh, the more dense it is uh, the harder it is and so it'll resist impacts and, and pressure from the teeth of the fish or anything like that so I'm going with something a little bit more dense here because we are dealing with musky so I got a piece of masking tape taped here um, I'm just going to sketch the lure on here, the, the side profile of the lure. I'm just kind of copying this uh, this Rapala that I, that I got here. Um, I'm not going to make it jointed, it's just going to be a solid lure. So now that we cut off the side profile, we're going to flip it up like this, leaving these, these pieces connected, and we're going to tape it back together. So now we can trace the top profile of this lure onto the top of this block, and uh, we can cut that out. First what I did was take the the front of the nose and the end of the tail and transfer that to the top and the next thing I'm doing is uh, I'm measuring the width of my piece and I want to mark the center line. Uh, you want to be aware of that because if you have one side larger than the other, if you have any uh, asymmetrical parts on, the, on this profile um, your bait is going to run, you know, one way or the other. So you want to keep a keep a good center line. Um, that's why I like using masking tape because you don't see the grains in the wood, and uh, you can just follow your lines.
right, so next I got it over at the belt sander and uh, I can see some issues. It's like my bandsaw isn't cutting perfectly straight. You can see how that's arced and I cut farther on this side. Um, you know, these aren't perfectly symmetrical. So I'm gonna try to uh, even those out and make it as symmetrical as I can on the top profile. It's very important to make it run straight. Um, and the quickest way to do that is just uh, grind away on the, the belt sander. The next thing is uh, just round off these edges. And so you take a pencil and uh, you kind of put your finger in one place and you run it along the side and that'll give you one good line the same dimension across the whole top and then when we go to the disc sand, or the belt sander we're gonna go and sand to that line Ready to make our line tie and our hook hangers and uh, basically what I'm using here is just 18 gauge stainless steel wire and take off a piece of that cut it off and then take the two ends and chuck it up in any drill and then uh, take a nail put it in your vise hook that over it and just tighten it down Don't go too far. We'll pop that off. And there you go. Okay, so I did make a mistake. Uh, so don't do this. I forgot to cut the slot for the lip uh, while the block was still flat and straight. Um, it, is, it does have some flat sides on it, so I might be able to make this work. But the lip is a very important thing. It needs to be straight or else your uh, your lure isn't going to run straight. I got my uh, wooden jaws on my, my vise now. I'm going to clamp it on the flat sides of the lure. And I'm going to use this uh, Japanese pull cut saw. Um, so what, what's nice about these pull cut saws is... Uh, because they cut on the pull stroke, um, they can make the, the metal very thin. Uh, and so you can get very precise cuts because the teeth aren't very, the teeth are very thin. So it's much easier to cut through material uh, with a thin blade. And so these are really nice. That was a, a minor setback, but uh, I got a pretty good lip cut into it, and uh, it's not perfectly straight, but it's a little bit larger than the Lexan that I'm going to be using, so I should be able to tip it. Um, the, the lip needs to be tipped this way while I glue it in. Alright, so next we're going to drill out the, uh, the holes for the line ties and the hook hangers, and basically we just want a drill bit that's uh, the same size if not just a little bit smaller that way this spiral can almost act like a screw and screw up into the wood all right so the next part is waiting and uh, I gotta drill holes to weight the belly of the uh, lure um, you weight the belly of the lure so that as it's running through the water, it doesn't want to spin on you. Um, the back is going to be buoyant, the belly is going to be weighted, so it's, and you want it kind of to be tipped forward so that lip is actually engaging the water, and that's going to cause it to 
to do the action back and forth. Um, so in this one I do have a hook hanger right here. I'm going to put a small hole right here and maybe a larger hole over here, but I'm going to try to put a little bit of weighting on either side of that hook hanger. Now for a bit of sanding. All right, so I got it sanded up pretty well, and uh, next thing I'm gonna do is install the line ties and uh, hook hangers. So all I'm gonna do is just coat around this with uh, a little bit of super glue and kind of twist it right in. Alright, so next I'm going to seal the wood. Uh, I'm using sanding sealer for that. Uh, basically, what it's doing is kind of waterproofing the wood itself a little bit, as well as uh, penetrating, the sanding sealer penetrates really deeply into the wood and uh, hardens. So it kind of hardens the wood itself, uh, makes your lures more durable. Alright, so now we can test the buoyancy of this because it's sealed. We can put it in the water. And uh, what I have for weights, this is a, these are just lead balls. This is a 50 cal for my flintlock, and this is 44 cal for uh, another black powder gun I have. So I'm just going to jam these in here and just see what this does. I know this is going to be more, I might have to hammer this one down a little bit. Let's try this alone and we'll hang the hooks because they do add just a little bit of weight. So that still floats. We're definitely going to need a little bit more weight than that. So I was able to pound that 50 cal ball right down, almost flush. I'll do a little sanding, knock that down. Um, this one I'll have to cut off, but uh, we'll see how it floats after I do that. So I just took it over to the bandsaw, and uh, lead is so soft it just it cuts right off. So uh, really easy, and now let's check how the weight is. So it is buoyant still, but with the crankbait, I think that's okay. We do have a lip that will suck it down a little bit more. The head is weighted down a little bit. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And when I add the clear coat at the end, it will, uh, it will add a little bit of weight. So I am pretty happy with that. I'm going to leave it there. Alright, so I sanded these down a little bit and uh, they're pretty much flush, but when I did that I got into that sanding sealer a little bit and uh, there are some voids here, so I want to uh, seal this up again and I want to uh, harden this lead a little bit. So what, what I'm going to do is take some sawdust, I'm going to jam it down in the voids and uh, I'm going to cover this lead a little bit and then I'll take super glue and sprinkle it over top. That'll harden really hard and I'll sand any bumps away and that should be sealed again and uh, really hard. Alright, so next is making the dive lip. Um, I'm using Lexan. You want to use something that's tough. Uh, this is not brittle. Uh, it won't break if it's bouncing off rocks off the bottom or anything like that. Um, you can use like aluminum, 
but I like using Lexan, it's clear and uh, it's definitely tough enough. So uh, I'm just gonna draw it out and then cut it out. All right, so originally I made it a little long and uh, I just took it over to the disc sander and took some off this way. So that looks quite a bit better. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just gonna scuff up this edge and we're gonna glue it in. So one thing I did forget to do was drill out the holes uh, for the eyes, but uh, anyway, the eyes are right here. What I'm using for eyes are, uh, I guess they're called crystal mini discs. Uh, I found them at Hobby Lobby and basically I guess you just put them in like uh, vases with flowers and stuff. Um, but they're gonna work really well for eyes. Uh, I'm gonna take some opaque black put a pupil in there and then maybe some pearlized silver or some other pearlized color that has uh, like glittery color to it um, just makes it flash a little bit uh, so I'm waiting for this to to cure up and in the meantime I'll, I'll do these eyes real quick So while that paint's drying, I can uh, drill out the eyes now. All right, so the eye paint is finishing drying, and that's that's what it looks like. So I think it looks I, li I think it looks fine, um, pretty good actually. So um, while that finishes drying. Uh, the next step is just uh, paint the rest of the lure, and I don't want to get any paint on the lip, so I got to cover that in masking tape. Airbrush time, and uh, in case anybody wants to know, I am using uh, the Iwata Neo, which is uh, Iwata is a, a pretty good brand for airbrushes, and then the Neo is just basically their bare bones model. Um, but it's it's got everything. It's uh, it seems. To be built pretty well. Um, we'll see how it works for me, but uh, for a budget, 50 bucks, uh, you can't really beat it. So, anyway, I am going to just match this color scheme uh, somewhat. Uh, I'm going to go for Fire Tiger, that's what I'm going to go for on this. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it. I'm starting with opaque white. Uh, you want to start with an opaque color. Um, I think typically it's going to be white and uh, that'll be your base color. Um, I'm using Createx, uh, these are airbrush paints and they're from Hobby Lobby again, but uh, you can't just put this in your airbrush and, and go after it. You have to use this uh, reducer um, and I think it's about 50-50 or so you want to mix it. So how, this air, how most airbrushes work is you push down for air, you pull back for paint. So Okay, so you do need to clean your airbrush between each color. Um, and uh, what, how I'm doing that is just using the reducer. But um, I think I, I kind of screwed up a little bit. I put this white in first, and this stuff's really gooey. Uh, goopy and it kind of clogged that up 
not really clogged it, but it was a lot tougher to clean than I think it should have been. So I'm gonna put the reducer in first. Couple drops, that's probably good. And then the color. And uh, the next color I'm gonna use is this uh, chartreuse fluorescent color. And I don't really need that much of this. I just wanna get a little bit of it. So I've done quite a bit. Um, I added some uh, red to the bottom um, and red around the gills. I also added some yellow to the bottom to make that orange. I sprayed some of the yellow up here. I added pearlized blue over top. Most all of it turned that kind of green. Um, I'm really liking it so far and now what I want to do is add the uh, stripes and uh, black across the top, so that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so that's the final paint scheme, and I have to say for my first ever time using an airbrush, first ever time painting a, uh, a lure, I'm pretty happy with myself. Uh, the last thing to do for uh, Cosmetics is going to be attach the eyes. All right, so that really brings it to life. Um, and we got really only one more big step here, and that's uh, we're gonna clear coat it, and that will seal it all up and give it a good finish. All right, so for the epoxy finish, uh, I got this Pro Marine Supplies General Purpose Epoxy. Um, it's really, all it is is uh, countertop epoxy, but uh, it is very clear when it's done, and uh, it's it's pretty hard, so it, uh, it really seals it up. So I'm um, just gonna mix equal parts and apply it with the paintbrush. So I got it set up on this rotisserie here, and uh, it's just a barbecue rotisserie. Uh, they're pretty cheap, but I hit it with some hot air to pop all the bubbles on the surface, um, and basically just wait 24 hours for it to cure. Uh, if there's any resin, you can see, maybe you can see this uh, hook hanger has some resin in it. I'll just drill that out tomorrow, and all I have to do after that is just Add some split rings and uh, add a treble hook, and this thing's good to go. Um, so hopefully the next time you see this bait, we'll be uh, in a muskie's mouth out on Lake St. Clair. Thanks for watching, and as always, be one with the outdoors.